nice and clean. And I have a story here, and the story is called Your Planet Needs You. So this is going to talk about different things that we can do. So how do you think our planet needs you? Let's have a look. While we read the story, you can think about what, what, what you think, why you think it needs you. And the story is by Philip Bunting. No waste in the world. Look, here is a monkey. A distant ancestor, let's say, she's great, great, great times your grandmother. Wow, that's long, long, that's very, 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 very old. Look, and there's, she's having a banana. So let's start at the beginning. In the natural world, there is no waste, zero, zip, nothing. Everything arising naturally from the earth. It eventually broken down and reused in a new way. No part of any plant, plankton person or parrot is wasted. All of the bits that make each living thing are eventually returned to earth to help make new life. So this is a long, long, long time ago. So there, there's a monkey. Then the monkey goes into the earth. And then there becomes compost and it becomes a living thing. And it's sort of like the banana. The banana peel becomes a banana tree. Why is there so much rubbish in the world today? Hmm, good question. Let's find out. For most of human history, almost everything we use, ate, made, or played with came directly from Earth. So we created very little waste. So he's got a toy, but it is a toy made of wood. And there's another one, another one. But a few hundred years ago, in industrious humans began industrializing. For the first time in our history, we began making things with materials that were not found in nature and began making them on really big scales. So some of you might have lots and lots of toys and some of you might have some wooden toys, some plastic toys. So we just have to be mindful of that. The more stuff we make, the more waste we produce. Today, we make more stuff than ever before. As a result, we're making heaps more rubbish than ever before in every sense. So there we are. There. In every year, we each create up to a ton of waste. So this is what one person, how much waste one person will create. That's the equivalent weight of a small hippo. Oh, my. We do make a lot of waste. Now, think about all the people in your family, your school, your neighbourhood, your community, and a lot of stinky, stinky hippos. That would be a lot, a lot of waste. Why is waste bad for the planet? Do you know why it's bad for the planet? Let's find out. Waste is created when we make stuff and also when we're done with it. Let's take a sketchbook as an example. Waste is produced at almost every stage of the sketchbook life. Unfortunately, this is true to pretty much everything we eat, wear or play with. So when you make a sketchbook, a drawing book, it will come from a tree and then they will take it and make it into paper. So and we need trees to give us oxygen. So then we, but we also need paper to draw, but we try and find other ways to use paper. So there it is. And they go, they get shipped and they go all over the world. And then when we finish our drawing, what do we do? We throw it in the bin. Oh boy. What kind of rubbish do we produce at home? Hmm. You have to think about what kind of rubbish you produce at your house. So uh, waste is unavoidable. We're always going to have waste as part of our lives. It's really important for us to understand that the waste we produce, we can begin to do something about it. As with many things in our wonderful world, the best place to begin making a difference is in your own home. Here are the main kinds of household rubbish 
thrown out for a typical family in an ordinary week. So usually in my house, we do throw out a lot of paper, okay? So it might be some packaging, pizza boxes, um, paper that my children have finished drawing on um, and things like that. And then we have a general food waste. So when mummy and daddy are cooking, we might throw out the food scraps. So here we have some fish bones, some chicken bone, some banana peels, some cheese, lots of different things that we might also throw out. What about some glass bottles? Yeah, I often throw out some glass bottles and plastic. And then, not to mention, what about our broken toys? Yeah, often we buy lots and lots of toys, but then sometimes they break and then we throw them out. And then here we have some metal cans. So we, you would have seen in some of Miss Karina's last um, sessions, we made some planter boxes out of metal cans. So you can reuse them. Now let's have a look. How long does our rubbish take to decompose? So decompose is when it breaks down. Okay, so not all rubbish will take, will decompose. At the moment, most household rubbish is sent to the landfill. A hole in the ground is a landfill and junk slowly begins to break down into smaller bits until it no longer looks like the big thing we threw out. Depending on what the junk is made from, it can hang around for a really, really long time. So an apple, an apple will compose very quickly, about two months, but a piece of paper will be five months. Wow, a broken toy ro robot will be 80 years. That's a long, long time. And a straw, so if you like to eat, drink with a straw, it takes 250 years. That's a very, very, very long time. So if possible, try not to drink from a straw. Our waste can hang around for a lifetime to come. So it's up to you to make the difference and put it in the right place. So most of it will go into the landfill and we throw and then the truck will come as their funky filly breaks down landfill pits of nasty greenhouse gases such as carbon dioxide and methane CH, which are warming our planet too quickly. So the less waste we can send to landfill, the better, because we want to protect our planet. And here we have our recycling bin. And there it goes, the junk journey. The, happily, we can avoid sending lots of our junk to the landfill by recycling it. And there, rather than burying our rubbish, recycling means that a lot of our household waste can be cleaned, chopped up into raw material and used again to make new recycled products. So we can even make some clothes, some new cans and some boxes using recycled products. And then the environment. The most terrible place our rubbish can end up is in the natural environment. So the natural environment means the water. This happens when we are really careless with our junk and it doesn't end up in the waste or recycling bin. Sadly, it is still very common. So with all of this rain and lots of rivers and canals and things overfilling and getting flooded, lots and lots of rubbish has ended up on roads and things, um, meaning that there's still quite a lot of rubbish that ends up in our natural environment so our lakes our beaches so when you go out you need to be very very careful to take your rubbish with you so now how can we help wallop waste so we can reduce reuse recycle renew really get involved so these are the things that you can do to help our planet. So things that you can do to reduce is buy less or buy better. Lots of things that are made aren't really needed 
and they um, aren't made to last long. So before you buy or use them, have a look and think about whether you really need it. With your electricity, you can unplug the electricity the that powers most homes. It comes from a very wasteful and environmentally damaging source. Burning coal, so while you might not see the changes directly, reducing the amount of energy you use at home will reduce the waste and help our precious planet. And reduce the use of single-use items. So when you go out, rather than using a plastic bottle, take your own bottle that you can refill or even your own cup that you can drink from and things like that. And even bags, you'll see lots of floating bags which will not help our turtles. You can use a reusable bag. So what can you do with some of the old things? You can reuse them. So with your old socks, rather than throwing out, you could make a puppet. And this will help the environment. If it's broken, fix it. So you can try and fix it before you go out and buy a new one. So you try and fix it or see if you can find another use for it. And if you don't want it anymore, you can give it away or donate it. You know, there are lots of people and children in the world who don't have some things. So you could donate some of your toys um, if you don't want them anymore. So now we're going to look at recycling. So recycling, so there is different ways to recycle. So you've got your cans to recycle. And then there's certain things that can and can't go, and we're going to do that very, very soon. Then we're going to renew a major waste problem. Area is food waste, which accounts for almost half of our landfill. So we do throw out a lot and a lot of our food. And one thing you can do is compost or have a worm farm. You know, our worms and the compost, they love our food waste, our apples, our grass, our um, carrots and things like that. And you know what else loves it? Our garden loves the compost and the food breakdown. So you, me, your family, your friends, yep, even the wild ones, everybody, we are temporary custodians of this beautiful little planet called Earth. This is our only home. And it's up to you, to all of us, to look after it. Use the ideas from this book to help you keep the environment clean. And that was lots and lots of ways for us to keep our planet or how we keep our planet clean. Now, I hope you enjoyed that story. That was a very long story with a lot and a lot of information. So now we're going to sit back and enjoy a very quick.